it is one meter. Let me announce one thing. See, data analytics, I think there is a separate group. That's what people told me. So you don't have to confuse it with uh, Nagesh's group. That has five people. Okay. Now, his group and uh, Supratiksa's group, which was the last presentation, are merged. Okay. Because that is not there on the web. So if you want his project, also give that. Both of them will decide how to allocate. All right. Yeah. We'll get free. Good afternoon, everyone. So, uh, project which we are going to talk about is rural ICT. ICT, uh, as it mentions, is information and communication technology. Now, this is a software platform which everybody must be aware, and it is very much relevant to the rural community in the sense that they are uh, they want to they have a lot to communicate with the city people and the urban people, but then there is a communication gap and uh, they are not able to use very expensive media or uh, communication devices. So what we are coming up with that we are going to use simplistic phones, not necessarily that it be a smartphone, use any smartphone and enable with, the, with that enable knowledge exchange and uh, internet access also. That is what we are looking for. So we are primarily building two systems. One is IVRS system. You must have had a heard about an IVR system. Interactive voice response system, just like when you call Vodafone or Alliance, the customer care, then an automatic uh, system responds and talks to you. So this uh, interactive voice response system is what we are building at. So the need for this, how it came, so I'll just explain that. So uh, it's called broadly demo development and demonstration of mobile based ICT advisory for farmers. And our main aim was to connect the farmers of the rural area directly to the customers without middlemen. So we identified some NGO groups who are supplying organic or other products to uh, consumers in the city. And what was happening was that they were using a manual system of calling them from their phones, taking the order. So sometimes the customer was not available. And sometimes when the customer used to call back to them, they were not available. So there was a communication gap and it was uh, leading to a lot of manual work and even loss of uh, customers or loss of orders. So we came up with an IVRS uh, solution and uh, where the customer could record the order any time of the day on a particular number. A number would be give, given by the particular NGO across all its customers and the customers could call any time of the day and record their particular order. So once the order is recorded, then it's in a voice format, an MP3 file, and the operator at the NGO end can hear the whole recording of the order, like it says 1 kilo potato, 2 kilo brinjal, 1 kilo rice, etc. So then in that, then after that, there is a drop-down menu, which is there, where you can choose the different products which are ordered and their data bill automatically. And the system already stores a list of products which the particular NGO has and the prices also, which can be changed by the NGO if he wants, the prices and the products. And based on that, an amount is generated and the bill is generated for each and every customer. Okay. So this is the system which we are looking at building. And it will help in many ways. Like one is technically and functionally helping the uh, farmer to connect to the, to the customer and also helping in the delivery efficiency. When the order is recorded well, then the delivery will also be done. And even this IVRS has two-way communication. One is from the customer to the NGO, and then the NGO also can communicate to the customer in case when the delivery is ready, he can send SMS from the IVR system, or he can also send the voice messages that your 
uh, produce is ready now and it's on way to dispatch. Or if it's a delay, he can even inform that there is a delay and your produce will be delayed. Right? So this is kind of a block diagram which explains how uh, the rural ICT system will help farmer group connect to societies, farmers and customers. Right? So this is the uh, web website which you are creating, Rural Interactive Voice Response System, it shows. And uh, we have just begun the system where uh, a user can log in into the system and these are different products. Like different products are there where the prices are listed and then it can be changed whenever it is required. Right. So different features will be a part of the ICT system like automated billing system which we just, just discussed. Then voice message response. Like when a uh, customer is calling to the system then he can record his voice, uh, voice order in the form of voice. And then two-way communication is also facilitated. In the sense, the NGO can broadcast a message to all its customers. A group will be created. The website in, within the website there will be a group. In the group there will be a list of customers. So the NGO uh, person can he can call the particular group, and the message will be broadcasted in the form of voice message to all the people that we have produced ready. Please place your order by say Wednesday 6 p.m. And then the customers can record the order on the call itself or they can call back at their convenient time and also record the order. So this facilitates two-way communication. And the message can be broadcast in any language because it's a voice message, so any language can be used. And even unknown numbers can be handled. That unknown numbers, you can, it will ask, the system will ask you to enter the registered number and then it can be handled. Right. And it is possible that uh, there can be multiple groups. We can do make it groups area-wise, like say we make uh, group Pune, Bombay, Kolkata, Bangalore, and then we can make different different groups. Or within a city, we can make different different areas and send messages. Whenever all the all the orders are together, then the orders for a particular area can be processed. Right. So these are the things which are going to work on. Uh, currently. One is language interoperability. So it is very important that different languages are catered to that. The website now appearing only in English as you saw some time back appears in different languages. And also we want a configurable IVR menu to be developed. Like currently the IVR menu is fixed. One for order, two for response and feedback. So the IVR menu can be customized based on the NGO's requirement. So that is what we are going to work on. And then integrating a text to speech engine where the messages which the user wants to broadcast, the NGO wants to broadcast, can be in the form of text messages and then can be translated into speech and broadcasted. And making the system user friendly. Right. So what are the requirements for this? So we are going to develop this uh, software in using Java, Spring, AngularJS, jQuery, HTML as frontend and servlet as a backend. Right. So these are the certain requirements. And we need people to be strong in data structures, algorithms, and uh, system design. So my friend uh, Saket will present our uh, uh, presentation on peer admin system. this system, it's a peer admin system. The main purpose of this is uh, a set of authors or students, they will submit their reports or uh, thesis work uh, on this website. And a set of reviewers will be reviewing those and grading them. So it's an online uh, portal where every, uh, they will submit their reports and they will correct all those things. So it has some functionalities uh, like submission of reports by authors, review of submitted reports by group of reviewers and managing this assignment. Suppose if there are 10 students, if they submit their reports, these have to be assigned to the reviewers. Uh, sub, suppose there are two reviewers, each each one should get five five reports like that. So this management, management managing this assignment process. 
So I will explain the what are the user roles in this system. First, there is admin. He maintain the system. So before uh, these students or others who submit the reports, this admin first creates a conference with conference dates, starting date, ending date. What is the last date for submission of the report? Uh, what is the last date you can edit your report? Like that. So he is the admin who creates the conference and he also creates a chair. He, he assigns a chair to one conference. Suppose if I am the admin, I will create one conference, uh, IITB internship uh, application. So this is one conference. I will create one chair. So once if I create a chair, admin job is done. He, he need not do anything. Everything chair will handle now. So next author. Author means who submits the report. Anything. Uh, who submits the thesis work. Uh, here basically students. So you can think of students as authors. So chair, chair is like head of the conference. The difference between admin and chair is once if admin creates a conference, he doesn't uh, take care of these conference dates. Uh, suppose if I have created a conference, I wants to give 50% uh, weightage to presentation and 50% weightage to your content, uh, like that. So these all uh, weightage of the conferences, everything will be taken by only chair, not admin. So admin uh, only he appears in the beginning of the uh, creation of conference. Once it is created, chair will come into the picture. So reviewer is the one who will review the uh, submitted reports. So there are many interesting, uh, this is our uh, system where uh, uh, login uh, portal of the system. Admin, uh, admin will have his own login ID and password, other will have their own, like that. each role will have their own ID and password. So as I said, uh, these are the functionalities of admin. Admin can create conference, assign a chair to conference and one more functionality which is common for all the user roles is sending mails. So they need not, uh, once if they uh, enter into this portal, they need not separately open Gmail and mail to uh, some other uh, others like that. In this only we have provided a functionality where they can send mails. So chair can ma manage conference dates. Suppose if suddenly faculty says I want to increase, extend the submission deadline. So the chair can manage those dates. Uh, conference weights. Uh, like uh, suppose if you attend any conference, they will give weightage to novelty, social uh, social impact. How how much the thesis is going to have impact on social life of people. So that these weights can be decided by faculty and chair sitting together and they can rate the weights. Uh, suppose if there are four weights, the weightage, some of the weightage should be 100. Presentation 50%, novelty 25%, social rigor, like this. These are called conference weights. So chain also assigns papers to reviewers. This is the main aspect of the system. How do you assign these papers to the reviewers? There are two ways here. One is manual assignment. If the number is very less, no problem. I can assign manually this paper to this reviewer. But if the number is in hundreds or uh, more than 500, then we have an option of automatic assignment, some nice algorithms, research-oriented algorithms, which will automatically take uh, the <coughs> submitted reports and it will assign to the reviewers. Uh, there are some nice extensions to it which you will be working on. These are uh, works which you are expected to do. Um, so send automatic intimation mails uh, to others before deadlines. Suppose if tomorrow is the deadline, today I have all, already all the mails in my database. So what you have to do is you have to think of a way how you will send an automatic mail to others intimating that tomorrow is the deadline and a warning mail, please submit. Uh, before tomorrow, like that. So, uh, this is an interesting task. And next is, you right now when we made this project, we did not keep anything in mind. This is for uh, stud MTech students to submit their reports, or this is for researchers who are doing research. We did not keep anything in mind. So, we want to extend the system to a particular uh, particular uh, uh, scenario, that is MTP evaluation. If set of MTech students are there, 120 MTech students are there in CS. We want to make this system deployable so that all the MTech students submit their reports and uh, faculties also log in into the site and they grade the uh, MTech thesis. So requirement specification for adjusting the system to MTP reports is expected. Uh, we are trying to extend this. So next, as I said, uh, this is one more interesting extension. Uh, suppose uh, I have a list of reports ordered according to the total scores. Suppose if I am rating for uh, 100. I have the scores and I will rate them. This is the rating, this is the rating. But now I want one more extension. Uh, suppose I want only, even though presentation is very good, I don't care. I want only those projects which have great social impact on the society. So uh, I want a future in the website uh, which says that, which shows 
list of reports according to my requirement sortable according to social impact sortable according to novelty sortable according to new thing in it like that so that's, that is the thing you have to add right now we can see only uh, list of reports based on ordered on the total scores we have to add this uh, according to individual requirements next this is uh, last task which is keyword extraction it, it is somewhat higher level research task maybe two months is more but you can make an attempt uh, that is if all right now uh, reports are submitted we are assigning randomly reports to random professors random report to a random professor but if you take some somewhat deeper look into it i want to extract keywords from the report and i want to decide to which area this report belongs this is machine learning or this is artificial intelligence or this is computer networks all these things i want to extract next i have separate list of faculties i also have their database this faculty is interested in this area so fatak sir is interested in fatak sir is familiar with databases ganesh ramkrishnan sir is familiar with machine learning so this i have this set of data and this set of data now how will i say how will i assign only machine learning papers to machine learning faculty so this is an interesting uh, very interesting research task which you can try keyword extraction from submissions to get compatibility scores according to the interest which can be used by automatic assignment so our automatic assignment doesn't take this into consideration but if you uh, can extend this so that only a certain kind of reports are extended uh, they are assigned only to a uh, related area of faculties so that it reduces the burden on faculties if you assign a wrong paper to a faculty he should not say no he should not deny it, this de deny, deny should be made very less in this system so these are the four future tasks we are expect, expecting from intern students thank you